Well, that's sync. Cool. Hi, I'm Eli here with Nugget Productions. Syncing with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll sync with him, why not? <laughs> Hi, I'm Eli here with Nugget Productions, and this is... Nugget Productions. I'm Will's Nugget Productions. <laughs> <laughs> I am uh, Will Ryan of DA Games. Uh, I do a lot of music in the Nerdcore scene. You might know me from Bendy, or Cuphead, or Five Nights at Freddy's. I also am the voice of Sands and Flowey from The Fun Detail is Realistic, and the Drill Sergeant and Bagel Guy from Astiff Movie 2. So, not only do you do a lot of music stuff, you do a lot of voice acting on the side as well, or is that more like a main thing to you? Yeah, I, th I, think, the, I think the voice acting is like the side gig for me. It's like, I, it's fun, it's passionate. I know a lot of friends in the scene who do it a whole lot. And um, yeah, I, 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 I'm more of a voice director, I would say. So I, I get people to come to me, like I, I get voices, they come to me and everything. Or I'll just do my own goofy voices for my own stuff. But it's always nice, like doing something for other people as well. Voices are always fun. How'd you first start with writing your music? How did I first start? Um, I broke up with my first ex, <laughs> and then, hey, well, the Taylor Swift formula just came. No, um, say, yeah, basically, I just, I, I had a knack for it. There was always a keyboard around me. There was always a drum kit around me. There was always something, and I was always really interested in just hitting notes. And I think I just started doing this, hitting one note and memorizing it for a day. Like, okay, that's the C note, that's the D note. That's and now I can know every note off the top of it. And I'm like, let's put them and arrange them into some random stuff. And I was like, yeah, improv. Let's put it in there. Let's just make some stuff. And people found a knack for it um, in my school. The last day of school, people like, that was my first ever time where people were like, oh my gosh, your music, oh my God. So I knew there was something to it. And I didn't expect it to ever get this far, but all of it has just been a random, let's just get on. Let's just do our thing. Uh, yeah, that's how I did it. You already mentioned they do a lot of video game based music. Was that always the aim or did you want to start with different things first? I was always an original artist first. So I always wrote from like where I came from, like my music uh, came from, the hearts came from, my memories came from, anything like that. Um, it was only up until I found people like JT Music, at, at the time JT Machinima, now JT Music, uh, Nate Wants to Battle, Living Tombstone, all those kind of things. Oddly, Living Tombstone I actually found through his Road to El Dorado remix first, and then I saw Discord, and then Five Nights at Freddy's, and I was like, wait, people can actually like write stuff for this music? I'm like, that's insane. So I decided to take a crack at my own uh, with Five Nights at Freddy's 3. And originally I was going to do like a Moves Like Jagger, very funky kind of thing. Then I got drunk and sad, and then it just turned into what it is today. But it shot us up like crazy. It was, it was insane. I didn't even know we'd do that. But even today, we still do a lot. I still do my own original music on the side still. So there's a, a whole mixture of everything. But yeah, absolutely. It was just, wow, gaming music? You can do that and stuff? and and. And put it on streaming services that's interesting so yeah we got that so i take you on expecting to blow up as much as it did then absolutely not i mean i, I thought i peaked at new grounds i thought I'd, that's it that's my life i'm just gonna stay at mcdonald's i'm gonna work my through and everything because i did i was an animator long before i did music and everything but i made two five nights at freddy's animations um and they both reached like a million views at that point i'm like okay so i guess i'm gonna be an animator and then uh, the song came out, and instead of animation, people asking when the next song's coming out. I'm like, I guess they've chosen my career now. <laughs> but you're, I mean, I'm not regretful of it. It was, it was great, but I never expected it to shoot up as much as it did. Would you mind just guiding us through your creative process, how you start writing something and then kind of lead off with it? Uh, I, I, I pl probably play the game first or probably see some trailers and stuff like that. It'll ha there'll be some inkling memory that I have that I can connect it to because I don't just look at the game and I just uh, talk about the mechanics or anything like that. I like to attach it to something because that's how I still put out my original material. It's like I want to attach it to something close to me. So I start thinking of random metaphor that could go with it, etc. I mean, a good example. It's actually quite funny. We made a second uh, Cuphead song, Cup the Grass. And the way the lyrics were going, you would have never thought it was about an abusive relationship. But it managed to find a way and it managed to make it through. And that's how I like to make it interesting now. It's like, if you can still keep it with the game, nobody has to know the original meaning, but that's how I get into it now. So I'll just sit and probably either play the game, see a trailer, I'll be like, this is a cool jive. And then I'll spend about an hour making an instrumental and going, I hate it, I hate it, I absolutely hate it until I find the perfect thing. I'm going, okay, I actually love it now. I actually really like it. And then I'll get on with it and everything. And then um, I will never release something that I truly despise. I will always put something that I really love. So yeah, recently it's just been, that's the way I've been doing things. But back then it would be just as easy as, because you can do it as easy as, all right, yeah, just talk about the game mechanics, everything like that, mention the name of the characters. 
There's so many different ways of doing it, but that's my way. It's like keeping it original. You said that you only put out some, something that you really love that you've made. Is this something to do with imposter syndrome or is this just more a perfectionist mindset? This is about like connecting with the audience. Cause like, this is something I used to do a long while ago is I, I did release stuff that I wasn't necessarily proud of. And it's still to this day, like people come up and talk about, oh, it's the, this, this classic song and everything like that. And now I don't have a great connection with that. And so I can't empathize with people that much. I can pretend all I want and be like, oh yeah, that's awesome. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, why that one? Why that one? So literally it's about, I want to connect with the audience as much as I can. So I only want to release music that I enjoy making. And then the right audience will be there or an audience will be there to either enjoy it or critique it. It is the whole age of the internet. It's all about opinion. Like everybody has something to say. And as long as they have it, that's, that's freedom and awesomeness. But when people come up now and say, oh yeah, this song, this song, I can go like, yeah, I love that. We can talk about it. it that's how I like doing it. What do you think your favorite game is that you've written a song about, kind of? Oh my gosh. I mean, I know, I know my favorite game that I haven't written a song about. Yeah, God of War. <laughs> that was my favorite. I'm surprised I haven't even done anything for it yet. It's instead, we, I did do an animation called God of War Speedrun. That uh, was on Bantamation. I got like 2 million views and I'm like, oh. I didn't realize people did that. I didn't realize people would like be so interactive with that because we're very small. But it's like, oh, God of War. I love me some Valhalla shit. I love me Norse mythology, mythology of anything. I absolutely adore it. But um, a game that I liked and I also made uh, music for, uh, Dead Space. Recently, Dead Space, I, I played the remake. Uh, I've always been a fan of Glenn Schofield's work uh, for all the ages, ever since his party game. <laughs> uh, but I've, I've been a fan of him for a while, and I was like, oh my god, this Dead Space remake. And I just started upgrading my equipment, started upgrading my expertise in like mixing and mastering and engineering. I'm like, oh my god, what a perfect opportunity, because they've got RNG in there. I could experiment with everything. So I, I made uh, uh, the song, I'll Make Them Whole. Earlier this year, I put it out and I was, and it's such a crowd pleaser. Like we go in, especially metalheads, they love jumping and banging and mosh into it. I'm like that is my guilty pleasure right there. That's what I love most. So yeah, that one I would say. That and, you know, Bendy and the Machine. I, I liked Build Our Machine when I made that. That was the most spontaneous thing. And it was the most natural flowing process possible. It's just 12 hours of non-stop ideas and no break. And it's just like, oh, here we go. I guess it's done. I like you're flowing out of an ink machine. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I felt, I literally felt as sweaty as one too. It was oily and drippy and everything. So no spotlight all the time. I'm like, <laughs> and then I got it. Quite the image, no? It is, it is. Well, if you want to, you got an imagination for it. Don't think too hard. Uh, who's the artist who inspires you the most? It doesn't have to be video game related, but it could be also as well. Artist. I mean, Glenn Schofield for his games, um, I would say. Zirel for animation. Zirel is, is, is an object online. He's great. He's uh, recently made a series called Monkey Wrench, uh, which is really cool. Uh, as far as voice actors, I mean, John DiMaggio is right up there for me, and Troy Baker, Nolan North, all of those great people. Uh, as far as music goes, uh, I mean, metal bands of the ages. So like Iron Maiden, Judas Priest. I mean, recently Kill Switch Engage and all of that. Girls with Engage is like my favorite band of all time. That and uh, Disturbed, Breaking Benjamin, all those. So, I mean, they're artists of their prime. They're still going today. And it's it's funny because like the with Kill Switch, the reason why I love them the most is they've got such a great family dynamic. Like their old singer and new singer get along so well. They celebrate it with each other on a song together. And that's, you know, whatever you're going through, whatever music you're making, you know, that bond is something I love the most. It's like, who cares? You're making good music, you die, you have fun. It's the simplest thing, but it's the most filling thing too. So they're definitely big up there for me. You said something about voice acting that you've been doing that as well. What are some of your roles that you've done? So I did uh, the drill sergeant and the bagel guy from Astic Movie 2. Also in the deleted scenes, I was the fax machine guy and the space cadets in that one. I was also uh, in a few, I was almost in an only plays um, voice. I was almost a shaggy voice in that. But uh, I was Sans, Lowey, and the boat guy in If Wonder Tale was realistic and a few casual voices on the side. I was uh, in a bunch of stuff from Smash Bits all together. I was Ned Stark in If Game of Thrones was realistic as well. Um, I'm Grant Cohen in Ben Dinate Machine Chapter 3, so the cassette tape, I'm the accountant. And recently, I'm Shovel Knight Cuphead in the new fan-made Indie Cross 
series as well. So yeah. all those great characters. All the very well-known characters as well. Absolutely, yeah. They're, they're massive honors. To, even even if it's just fan projects, you know, like to be able to put a voice to something. You see so many people talk about Sans as the, the iconic headcanon is the Undertale is realistic. Right. And like, you chose the one that talks about shit and diapers. That's that's incredible. You've got some spirit, <laughs> and it's like, but that's great. You know, I love it. I love it when people come up and say like, "Oh my god, yes, lad, yes, lad." Is literally what I say. I'm like, that's awesome. I saw the little hint of the sound was going in there. <laughs> yes, lad. I mean, he does come through every now and then. Like, cause I surround myself because I'm from Birmingham. Like, I'm from Yorkshire, but I live in Birmingham now. For, you know, for about six years and everything. And that accent just keeps coming in. And obviously yeah. I hang around with Dex quite a bit, the guy who made it for sales realistic. And his accent comes out and he's all like lad, lad, lad and all that. So every now and then it will just come out. Is it hard to give a voice to these voiceless characters? Because they are very silent in the games. Uh, Yeah, because you've got to be very delicate with it. I mean, with, with the Sands and Flowey ones, I just literally got the direction that Dex gave me. So that was easy because he just said, well, he didn't say it. He didn't even write the script. He improvised it through his mic, sent us the tracks back, and then we would voice over it. But his his was a bit more like, he was down here, a bit softer, and everything like that. You take this lamp shade and pretend to be a lamp. And then I tried to follow that, but then I had it is, you know, when you think sand, you think, <laughs> which I think was a Patrick Starr sample, if I believe right. Yeah. Uh, it was from an episode, I can't remember what it was, but um, it was that. And so I like, combined that with the, <laughs> I was like, you're right there, mate. So he always sounds like he's about to laugh or say like the crudest joke in the world. It's like, really build it up. This is a flowey it was from his stream. He did the same thing. He voiced out to the, and then it was like, just down here as well. He always did it lower and everything. But then as I got more correct with it, like I, I got into the voice and this is it. This is flowey. I still can't kill or kill, kill me, kill me, kill me. <laughs> I'll, I'll say it eventually. I will. I swear. Yeah. Eventually you'll say it. <laughs> yeah. Do you plan on implementing these voices into some of your song coming forward? You know what? It's really funny. Uh, somebody actually got me on Cameo at one point because uh, I also made the Baldi's basic song, Your Mind. It's the most pain thing we've ever done in our lives. So we just did it for shits and giggles. And uh, somebody got me to do Sans singing that voice. And so it was like a short little bit. If you ever find it online, it is, it is out there and everything. But as... I don't know, it's quite funny. I'd never actually thought about like doing voice related stuff. I mean, the most character driven song that I've done in my time was Gospel of Dismay, which was built, which is a Bendy song. But it was like my own Bendy and my own Boris, uh, so, so, like characters and everything. Also, I am me, they, they introduced the same thing. But I have my own little voices. And so, again, it's another one of those things where people come up to me. It's like when I think of Bendy, I think of your voice. And when I think of, you know, uh, Grant Cohen, I think you and all that. It's, it's it's an interesting concept. I like that idea a lot. And being tied to these characters that clearly you haven't made, but you've, well, I mean, made of a version of yourself in them. Does yeah. that feel weird or is it more like... It, it's it's interesting because it opens up the avenue of like, I think anybody can do that. Anybody has the power to do it. Even a schmuck like me can do it. Like, you know, you see fan dub, comic, fan, comic dubs, everything like that. Clearly people have power to do that. And there's clearly a resonance with it. There's a lot of like headcanon voices that go out there. It'll never replace the original thing. And everybody knows the original thing. They respect it to pieces. But there's that little thing on the side that's like, you know, I think of Sans now as the real me, yes, lad guy. And that's like, that's very interesting. I didn't think it would resonate that much, but it, it, it did. And it's done incredible since. Let's head back to music for a second. You said you do your own um, original music. Yes. Um, if you want to plug your new album, just go ahead now. Uh, yeah, well, well, actually, we're doing a remake of the very first album we did of Iris. It's uh, Heart of an Artist Resurrection. So it's basically, uh, I'm giving the songs justice now. So back then, I didn't have the greatest engineering skills, but now I have not only like better mixing better crafting and all of that i can i'm also writing extended stuff for it as well um and we've also got a whole book to go along with it um that's coming out down the line we're making some games as well for that kind of thing so yeah very story driven stuff we're very interested in doing that but uh yeah original music that is the next thing we're looking for we've got three albums power of an artist goliath's throne and dawn of the dimitrix they're like following a trilogy which will go alongside the books when we get them but uh, Resurrection, we're making that. Is this going to be something you'll be, you're doing going forward? Like Resurrection, some of your old albums? 
Uh, oh, you know what? People talk about that, but I think when it, the reason why Hollywood Bernardus was so special to make was because it was a very infancy level thing. I've spoken to a bunch of people about Goliath's Throne and Dark Matrix, and they say stuff like, it was of its time period, and it's that healthy balance of it doesn't need one. But you know, if anybody knows me, I will probably be in the studio one day and randomly go, fuck it. Let's just make Goliath's Throne Resurrection or something. Like, it's not off the table, uh, but I'll be looking to make newer material. And if that, if it comes along and people are like, man, I so love a Goliath's Throne Resurrection. Sure, sure. I mean, it's not off the table. If you could go back in time and just start again, or not start again, or like, oh, hello, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're no totally it's perfectly wrong. fine. No, it's perfectly fine. It's, it's renowned for this. Oh, really, <laughs> I have a kid, I know that. <laughs> Um, if you could go back in time and to any point in your career and give yourself one piece of advice or relive it, what would it be and when would it be? I, th I think I've said this before, but I would tell myself not to take social media to heart too seriously. Because back then I was very impulsive, I was very emotional, I still am. But like, I used to always be very influential and I didn't have that many friends back then. And I, my, my connection was solely on social media. And it was always in the darkest places too. And so I always took it very seriously. It felt like the world was a bird and everything was... It's all about looking in the right places. And I'm happy enough to be in a healthy environment as of recently, and more healthier than before. And if I'd have looked back then, because I had a lot of industry knowledge that I shouldn't have really known because it was skewered. And back then I was too afraid of people, be approaching people because maybe they're too busy or maybe they're assholes, maybe they're not and everything like that. But no, I, I think I took that a bit too seriously back then and it squandered a lot of opportunities for me. I'm happy I got what I've got as opportunities, but I reckon I might have had more if I could have been extroverted at more. So if I had to go back, I would tell myself, get off social media every now and then, touch grass. Just touch some grass, just have fun and everything like that. You heard it here, folks. Yeah, touch grass, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much. It's been an honor. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you yeah. so much. Uh, that's been it, yeah. Thank you very much. Hey. Hey.